It is Wednesday, the 16th of August, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. We continue today in the fourth chapter of Acts and this miraculous fallout that's taken place because Peter and John, in the name of Jesus, have raised up a lame beggar. Now that they have been released by the religious officials that tried to silence them and to put them away, they now return to the gathering of the followers of Jesus. It says in the 23rd verse, after they were released, they went to their own people. They went to the people who had been following Jesus and listening to the apostles. And they reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When all of the people heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through your ancestor David, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against the Messiah. This is a quote from Psalm 2. And the people are singing praise because another promise is being fulfilled in this healing, in this attempted rejection of the Messiah. What the prophets foretold has come to pass. The Gentiles rage, the people imagine vain things, and the kings of the earth and the rulers of the people have tried to reject it. But it cannot be rejected. The verses continue at 27. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, the most powerful men in the area, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness. No matter what they say, we will proclaim. I want to stop for a minute and take a look at verse 28, where it says, Your plan had predestined all of this to take place. We shouldn't think of this in the theological category of predestination as fate. Um, God had decided something and there was no way to undo it. That somehow everything that happens is somehow put in place by God, and it can't be undone. That's not really what is being talked about here. What's being talked about as predestined is that the prophets of the Lord have been proclaiming for centuries that God would be rejected, and that's not news. God was rejected by the people in, when they made the, the, the golden calf at the bottom of Sinai. God has been rejected by the people over and over again, so it seems like a predestined or it seems like a status quo that this is going to happen, that the Messiah would be rejected. But now, Lord, now, Lord, you have given us the boldness of the Spirit so that we may speak and not be silenced. While you stretch out your hand and heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's a big theme in the book of Acts. You stretch out your hand and you heal and you do signs and wonders and they are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Performed by who? By those who witness to him, by those who won't shut up by those who won't be threatened, by those who won't back off. The boldness of the people is what's being proclaimed here in the face of being overwhelmed by the power of God. It tells us when they had all prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken. An earthquake shook the place. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit once again, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. They were forthright. They were honest. They would not be intimidated by the powers of the world. I'm not sure always that we're so bold 
It's hard to be bold in this world, to proclaim that in the name of Jesus, people are loved who other people don't love. That in the name of Jesus, healing can come when no one expects it. That in the name of Jesus, we can forgive our enemies, even though we don't feel like it. You see, the boldness comes from God and the Holy Spirit. And when we praise God, when we praise God and we recognize God's actions through us, it makes us part of the unfolding of the resurrection of Jesus. The ascended Jesus uses us. And we should never forget that. The command to be silent does the opposite to people of faith. We'd be good to learn that. Let us pray. Gracious God, when our fear, when the culture, when the powers around us all tell us to be silent or be thought fools, to be silent and be ridiculed, help your spirit to loosen our tongues and to refuse the silence to proclaim the name of your Son, his grace, his mercy, his love. We ask this in his name. Amen.